We now come to the Lord's table, a time of special closeness. And our hymn of preparation is number 386. We come as guests invited. Your bulletin says 385. My bad. 386. Let's stand. Let's not stand. Let's remain where we're seated and sing the first two verses.
And he said, this is my blood shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, and all who follow after you, drink you all of it, in remembrance of me. Loving God, for the love that we no way earn, that we no way deserve, and yet you pour out upon us every moment of every day. We give thanks. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture comes from 1 John chapter 5. Hear the words from the Holy Scripture. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. 
for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want us to look back just a little way this morning, and it's not terribly difficult looking backward, and I want us to go back maybe 30 or 40 years, maybe even 50 years. Now I want you to think about dinner time at your house, and maybe the television would come on at 5 or 5.30 or 6 or sometime in there as you ladies might have been fixing dinner and the men were coming home and the children were trying to get their homework done and the TV came on and there were folks like Walter Cronkite or John Chancellor or Dan Rather or Huntley and Brinkley and then there in the tail end of that parade Tom Brokaw and remember what it was like watching them before dinner time and that nightly ritual kept many parents current with current events. But for young children, for teenagers, me at that time, and for many of us, the ritual practice of turning on the news nearly did me in. It was about as interesting as watching my hair grow or watching paint dry. It just wasn't there. All it was was white-haired, talking heads, droning on and on, so boring, about who knows what. And to be honest with you, I didn't care. It didn't mean a hill of beans difference. But I'm sure that you've noticed over the last 20 years, the news has morphed into something totally different. It's changed. And to keep us interested and tuned in, newscasters have virtually married or have been soldered to this new journalistic adage, and it's not really new any longer, but it's very fitting. And that adage, that saying is, if it bleeds, what does it do? It leads. If it bleeds, it leads. Even more TV newscasts have focused their wide angle lens, their telephoto lens, their slow-mo lens, their instant replay cameras on the violence that disrupts and scars our lives almost every day. Watching the news is now just as mesmerizing and terrifying for us as it is for a five-year-old watching it. Bodies splayed out all over the screen, blood flying and flowing across the television. The news has become so grisly it has become so graphic, both in words and in pictures, that a lot of community folks have clamored for and have received from their local stations, specially toned down, toned down, family-rated versions of the news that are deemed more acceptable for the younger children. Very sadly, we have become a society that's almost saturated in blood in the movies, and in the news, in our sports, and on the screen, blood sells. For many years, back when we were young, most of us were young, the only books with blood in their titles were books about vampires, and witches, and maybe horror mysteries. But blood now, and today, has become a hot buzzword. John, tell me if I leave something out or add something that's not true here. Like back in the late 90s, the BBC had a television series on microbiology, and then it was turned into a book, and it's called Blood, God, Genes, and Destiny by a man called Steve Jones. And 
Very sadly, unless the blood really spills and spurts, we're not real impressed with things anymore. We want to see.